I'm Mark Saxton. I'm Joey Cundiff. And as always, this is Blue Collar Sports Talk. Uh, what a wonderful week in sports for everyone else besides us. Yep. And if you are a fan of anybody who won besides the Bengals, uh, don't you know, care. Go fuck yourself, maybe. <laughs> maybe. It's been tough. It's been tough. But you know what? Hey. It is time to, to talk, talk some, some shit. shit. Let's begin to talk some shit. And as always... Sponsors here, codes here. here. Now let's get into it. But first, we do have some exciting news. Uh, the NFL. Mm. Joey B, mm. that's exciting to me. Hey, one of, one of, what did they say the other day? One of the best quarterbacks in the league right now. They're finally giving him that credit. They finally are. I was so happy because we've been on this train for a long time. Joey B is that dude. He's just accurate. Um, he, he's he's everything you would want in a pocket passer. Don't get me wrong, I'm I'm still a huge Josh Allen fan, but it just looks like there's a difference. Yeah, there's a clear difference. Of, there's a difference of a real quarterback and a quarterback who is his team. Well, and there's a difference too when when you don't have to force it. Right, right. That, that that's key. That's key, and I think that's what's winning him those big games. And I think that's why we see Josh. Who has, I mean, not this last weekend, but normally who has amazing games even in a loss. Right, right. Now, one person who was upset with the loss, Stefan Diggs, cleared out his locker room, didn't want to talk to anybody, <laughs> said this shit's getting old. It's been the same result over and over again. He finally came clean, everybody. You know, you want me to be okay with a loss? Nah. You right. want me to be okay with the same result? After all the preparation and hard work, nah, not going to happen. Right. Now, there's other ways to handle it, mm. especially not screaming at your quarterback, especially what we saw after, or with the Vikings. That wasn't the greatest exit of all time. Agreed. Kept it classy, though, uh, with the Vikings and then moved on. But I think if Stefan continues this, the sh- pattern we see where you get pretty, you get to the playoffs and then you lose and then you want out. It's going to be hard to find somebody who's going to want you to stay there. Agreed. That's all I'm saying, Stefan. Agreed. But let's kick it off, huh? Let's do it. Kansas City hosting the Jaguars, who came off of a dramatic win. This is a trend we see. Mm -hmm. Um, But they they were a lot closer than what I gave them credit for. They covered the spread, which I told you they they would. Well, we all said they would cover the spread. Not Cody. Oh, that's true. That's true. Cody owes me a shot because of that. But, um... But they were they were even closer than than what I mean yeah they were down by a full seven but they were closer than that right they had plenty of opportunities to steal this game they, they did just, they just couldn't do it they couldn't stop Travis Kelsey they couldn't slam the door shut on that offense no Travis Kelsey one one set I want to bring up because this is just ridiculous fourteen receptions ninety eight yards and two tutties that's mm. huge mm. that's a that's a playoff record right there in receptions that's, that's uh that, that was almost all of. Patty's yards. I think he threw yeah. for 195. Yep. On two legs. You know. And then on the other leg, threw for so another much. 195. Yeah. That's what it makes it sound like when we're watching the damn game. Yeah, that was that was frustrating in itself. Why don't you take me to uh, your team, huh? My team? That was not part of the deal. I can't wait till you wear a Jordan Love jersey. Uh, I picked the Eagles. They dominated. They covered the spread 38-7. to um, It was a good win for Philly. Just... Giants just came out flat and never aired up the tire. Yes. Executed absolutely nothing except for the loss of a season. Yeah, yeah, they looked like they gave up about midway through the third. Mid, no, I'll be honest. After it was fourteen zero, and then they didn't score. Yeah, yeah. Now, tell me one that you lost a point on, and ultimately this is what sealed the deal. This game is what's getting him a Jordan Love jersey, and when you wear it, what are you gonna have to say? That's my favorite quarterback. Yep. Take me to that game in uh, New York. You know, it's tough. I never really root against Joey B. I called for him winning the division. I called for him. Two making, years in a row. Making, exactly. Which you probably were the only person to ever do that. And I also called for him making a deep run in the playoffs. The only thing that I I didn't doubt him on, but I doubted if the Bills would show up or not, was this game here. We were both scared about the offensive line for the Bengals. And so, it, I mean, it really was a 50 50 pick. It really was. DeMar showing up. I mean, the. the, the allegedly. Allegedly. Yeah, yeah. According to everybody, allegedly. 
I mean, what, so what do they do? Yeah. Do we do that if we're famous? I think it's I think it's that way. That way. Yeah, I don't Either understand. Way. Oh yeah, this is uh, yeah. if we go to health class. <laughs> so ask me where it is. <laughs> ask me where it is. Where is it? Right here. No. Right here. Around up here. Oh, the belly button. Yeah. <laughs> oh, there it is. There it is. Oh, <laughs> Found it. Found it. Um, no, I really thought it would have been a lot closer than this. Um, the, the outcome was a shootout at the beginning of the bets, right? Yeah. The outcome was who knows. But Joey B handled them soundly, 27 to 10, just making mincemeat of that defense. And the Cincy defense coming in big, just doing what they're supposed to do. And uh, there was a report that I saw this week that I actually really agree with. I really like Joey and I talked about it um, countless times before this report came out, but it was nice to finally see since he doesn't have that roster, that, that, that big play, that big time roster, they have a bunch of solid guys right. making it happen. Right. Even when Joe Mixon went down, Samaj P. Ryan came up and was huge. Out of nowhere. Right. And then now that Joe Mixon's back, he's doing his thing again. Still. I mean, they're just a bunch of guys that are making this work no matter what's in front of them. Yep. And I think I think that's ultimately the key that you can ask for in any team, to, to uh, any winning team. And now at this point, because a lot of people were saying Zach Taylor, and, you know, I wasn't, I wasn't the biggest fan of Zach Taylor. It just didn't seem like he was the reason they're winning. But now that you de- dive deep into the – into their uh, their staff, their players, everything like that, and back to back AFC championship appearances. That's that's a coaching job too. Yes, agreed. And Zach Taylor is deserving some respect now. Like you have to give him his respect. No one, and that's that, that's just knowing what he has on the field in depth, and knowing what what part of the playbook to pull up at all times. Right. Um, so no, I'm I'm happy with it. Once again, I had to pick the Bills. Um, because of the Pickums bet, and that sealed my fate. It sure did. Because there's four games. No, f- there's two. There's three games left. Three games and I'm down left, by yeah. five. Yeah, three games left. So, um, why don't you yeah. take me to uh, Sunday yep. night? Yeah. You well, know, if they would have played Sunday night, it would have been different. But for whatever <laughs> reason, they want to do it at four o'clock. <laughs> That's always fun. Um, no, the Cowboys did have a chance. They ended up losing 12-19. to 19. There's every chance, even after the two picks. Everybody's saying, now this is an issue, okay? Yes, the two picks were costly, okay? One of the picks happened because we didn't have a reliable field goal kicker, okay? Right? Did those picks come in, were those picks in the second half? No, they were in the first half. Was it a um, both? It was both a were one in the first quarter, weren't they? Um, they might have been. I know for a fact they were both in the first half. So I understand that that's an issue. But there was no picks from there on out. Dak played a clean game, but he played it too conservatively after those picks. That's the issue. If you already have two picks and you're still only down, and you're only down by one and a half, what else are you gonna do? Just start throwing the ball. Uh, Tony Pollard went down. That was huge to the Cowboys' offense all year long. Tony Pollard has been a cornerstone in that Cowboys offense, in the run game and the pass game. Once he went down, Zeke is only good for three yards a carry, if that. Everybody knows what he is. He's a, he's a, he can push through the first line, and that's about it. He's going to get ankle tackled after that. He can't outrun anybody. And that being said, I'm still a huge Zeke fan. You need somebody to get you those two, three yards every time when it's a short, short yardage, you know? Right. He's going to be like how LeGarrette Blunt was at the end of his career, where it's just like, Give me these three yards right now, and we're chilling. Yeah. But <clears throat> Brock Purdy somehow is viewed better as the, better than Dak when he played. I don't know. Didn't blow me away. George Kittle blew me away more yeah. than anybody. Yeah. <coughs> that that and their defense. Yeah. Well, we knew the defense was going to be big. Um, they showed up and did what they were supposed to do, what they were expected to do. Yeah, it was a tough. It was a tough loss. Ultimately, we're still in that game. The last play of the game, I want to bring that up real quick. What else are you going to do? You have to drive almost the full length of the field. What else are you going to do? I mean, Here, here's my take on that real quick now. I mean, yeah, there's a bunch of people saying, um, you know, what happened to the Hail Mary? I, I saw this, end quote, elite quarterbacks are put in the position to test their arm. Um, the only problem that I have with that is even let's say Dak threw it the full length of the field into the end zone. 
whether anybody catches that that's wearing a star on their head is a right. crapshoot. Right. Um even even with even with everything that they had on the field and all the weapons that they had on the field, it didn't there basically what I'm saying is there isn't a wrong play. Because if we're talking about the most amazing play in postseason history where they had forty laterals and they ended up running it into the end zone, we wouldn't be having this conversation. Everybody would be ta- talking about how you know that that how brilliant McCarthy is, right? And how well organized, and they the would have had to gone for were. two. No, they would have. Are you going to trust Brett Maher to tie it up? Well, I don't know. In that situation and all that momentum, what I'm saying is you you don't have to do right, anything. That's what I'm saying, though. You know, right, if they scored right. the touchdown, they would have to go for the win. Right. So then, you know what I mean? Yeah. No, there was still a lot ahead of them. My main point is, it's really not a, a wrong play. It's which which one do you think is going to work? Anybody could have done anything they wanted. It's not. A, it's not a Madden game. You can't chuck right. and pray every time. Right. And and people are comparing <laughs> it to the Colts debacle when they try to fake punt it. Uh, it did not. It was not even close to that. We got yardage off right. of that. Just saying. Yeah, Zeke got destroyed. He's a fucking running back. What do you expect? I mean, and and let's uh, basically what I'm saying is it, it didn't work, and let's leave it at that. Right. That that, that cost nobody their job. If that was you're on the five yard line, and you need a touchdown. Then it's a different story, right? Or but not? We are, we not are even then. Even seventy if, yards back. Even even. I'm, I'm, what I'm saying is from the forty yard line in, right? Because Dak can hit the end zone from the forty yard line. Right. From the forty yard line in, yeah, that's the wrong call. This situation, even if you gave, even you gave Zeke the ball and he and he had a Ray Rice run, was right. it forty yards or something? He didn't right. need it for the first down. It, there's no wrong call in right. this situation right. is what I'm saying. If, you, if that's for somebody's job, then... You, what are we doing? And you're in the divisional round, then you obviously... You shouldn't have been there in the first place, which obviously was not the case. Um, real quick, I wanted to touch on two things. I'm getting... I'm seeing... No, I'm, a, I'm a Packers fan. I love <laughs> all the cowboy hate. <laughs> I am also a big fan of keeping the same energy. Okay, and I don't understand all the extra hate that the Cowboys are getting. Here's here's what I see. Okay, everybody's hating on Dak. Oh, he needs to go. He's the problem. He's the problem. Let's not forget, Dak has the ability to win a Super Bowl in Dallas if given the correct pieces. In my opinion. CD is not a number one guy. He's a great number two. Maybe possibility of being a number one later. The future with Zeke and Pollard, that's that's up in the air right now. However, I'm a firm believer you keep those two another year. Do the power back and quick back mixture. One of those things. Keep them in and out. I think you have a winning uh, formula. And if you give Dak a healthy line that stays healthy all year... And that stays consistent all right. year. That at most you'll have to worry about a spotty defense. At most, and now I'm saying that with the utmost respect, because Dallas had one of the best defenses all season we've right. seen. But so, there's a few games where the offense was showing and they didn't want to. Right. You know, and it happens. You right. can't depend on one. And and the reason why the reason why that they gave up those last. I say two two possession scores um, that 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 San Francisco had was they were on the field all damn day. What do well, you expect? Well, I I think that's good for one, but the first one where they scored when Kittle had that amazing catch. I mean, what else can you do? Yeah, it's one of those plays where it's He's like got a tip of cap. It's it's just one of those plays. It's like uh, the Seahawks uh, uh, that year when Russell Wilson threw a prayer to Tyler Lockett. After and bounced, scrambling. And it bounced twice off of him and he came up with After it. After scrambling everywhere, too. Or Julian Edelman catch against the Falcons. Like yeah. It's one of those plays where it's like you did everything right. He overthrew the ball, but George Kittle made an amazing catch. And Which George Kittle is known to do. Right. So the other, the other thing I want to say is, um, last thing, and then I'm going to ask you a couple questions about the Cowboys. So first and foremost... Um, I advocate for keeping Dak. I advocate for nobody losing their job over this game. But, let's face it, Mike McCarthy in the playoffs, not so good. Yes, he's won a big game. Yes, he's won a lot of playoff games. But he is known to go back into his shell and play not to lose, and that's what makes you lose. Number two, in a must-win big game, Dak had a bad game. It is what it is. He had a bad game. The week prior, folks, he was five for five in in, in the red zone, right. 
And nobody was questioning him. Right. Nobody wanted to even acknowledge him. Right. Um, that defense, once again, if, if the offense complimented them, they wouldn't have been on the field all damn day. And maybe, I don't know, just maybe one of those scores don't happen. Right. Um. Because it was, I mean, in the first half, in the first half, it was a chess, it was a chess match. Right. Um, that being said, all that information out, there are some rumors, some possibilities. We'll say even one: Does McCarthy keep his job? And two: Does Dak go anywhere? Um, I'm gonna answer. <clears throat> I'm gonna answer both of them real quickly, and then dive deep on it. The only person that should lose their job after this entire playoff run is Brett Maher. He's the only person. If you get rid of Dak, what, what are you going for? Are you going to trade up for the number one overall pick? Is that what your intentions are doing? And Dak has a no trade clause. How are you going to sell him the Bears? Right. How are you going to sell him the Texans if you want the number two overall pick? What? How is this going to work? Right. <clears throat> number two, this is back-to-back 12 win seasons with Mike McCarthy. Mike did not call offensive plays. Anybody who's mad at the offensive plays, that's Kellen Moore. That I mean, that's as simple as that. Mike got the guys fired up. We played well. Like, even in this loss, with everybody talking as much shit as they want about the play calling, about Dak, it was a one-possession game at the end of the day. Right. Why do you lose jobs out over a one-score pos- or one-possession game? Like it's You can't do that. If you got blown out. Now, if we're talking about the Giants... And you want to talk about Daniel Jones, that's a whole different conversation. Right. But this was a one-possession game. And in an and just like you said, in a do-or-die situation like this was, was it not the same last week? Oh, yeah. So where where is that? Why can't you give credit where credit is due? And everybody was predicting the 49ers to win anyways. Right. So what is this? Is this supposed to be a miracle season, and if you lose, then you're out? In that case, why is Patrick Mahomes and Andy Reid still together after last year? Yep. I mean, that's all I got to say is like, you, I got, you I got, can't, you can't, and who are you going to do to, who are you going to get to replace both? Right. If you're going to hit your wagon on Sean Payton, Sean Payton has the entire NFL in his back pocket right now. It's who wants to give the most money. That is what it is. And, and I got, I got two, two points to, to make on that one being the fact that, um, Mike wasn't calling the offensive plays, right? But two, Mike wasn't counting on his kicker to crap out on Right. Him. That completely takes your special teams offensively right. out of the game plan. Right. Now you have to coach on that on the fly. Right. Pollard goes down. Now you have to co- coach that on the fly. And then um, your defense being all, you know on the field all damn day long. Now you have to coach that on the fly. Right. So when, when it was the quite opposite the week before. So being that the, the people are calling for McCarthy's job is... Just ass nine to me. Right. In this is, situation. Is he the greatest coach in the world? No. But we're gonna have that conversation every year because there's gonna be one Super Bowl winning team. Right. I don't so, I don't know what's so hard to comprehend about that. You get one there's one team that wins it all. And according to all the fans, that's the best team, that's the best coach, that's the best quarterback. And everybody else should be fired because they lost. I don't understand it. I don't. Now if we did something if we had the lead. And we like Brandon Staley, for example. If we blew a twenty-seven to seven lead a half, then I'd be calling for jobs. Yeah, we didn't. We played well. We played well enough to win, even though Dak had a bad game. We still played well enough to win. Agreed. It, it was that's that. I mean, I really don't know why this is a conversation. Uh, it's not us bringing it up. It's the world, right. the sports world, bringing it up. I mean, we just we just wanted to give our opinion on it. What I really what I really want to know is. With these people overreacting so much, I, I, I mean, I truly, this is on the fly, you don't know I'm about what I'm about to say, but I wonder how they handle real world situations. You get in one fight, do you divorce? Yeah. Your kid talks back to so, you, do you so, just kick him out? It's a lot of over overreaction and overcorrection. Yeah. It, usually it only happens on Monday, but this shit just keeps going on. I don't, yeah, yeah. I don't understand. Like, if your boss messes up once, you, you quit your job. Your job and not paying your bills. What are you going to do? Come on, guys. Let's let's think about this. This is a business. Think about it. Try to try to imagine you're running a business. Would you would you sell this? Right. If this was your stock, would you sell that? No. Not I at would all. try and add to it for sure. Like I said, like I said and I'm going to touch on this point again because I I truly think it's important. 
yes, the Cowboys have a lot of weapons. Okay, first and foremost, going to be the first to admit that. CD is not not that guy. I think he's he he's, will he's, he will he develop, will, but, but not right losing, now. Losing Amari Cooper was probably the biggest the biggest issue for the Cowboys, even over Brett Maher. Like, well, imagine having. CD not being guarded by the number one or the the slot number one, and you have a a, a legitimate deep ball receiver. Right, and that's what I was just gonna say. There was one of the drives. I think it was one of the Cowboys' last drives. He had five receptions of that drive, and they still didn't get into the end zone. Yeah, and I mean, now that's not saying oh CD's trash throwing. No, I love CD. Yeah, yeah. I'm just that's, I'm I, I'm I'll advocate for CD all day long. All I'm saying is. Maybe add to him. Don't he? Don't expect him to take that entire load by himself. Right. That's all I'm saying. I'm not even saying that he can't handle the load by himself. But you're asking an awful lot out of one guy all season. Yeah. And 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 let's face it. You're you know you're not gonna you're not every day you're running into a Jerry Rice, a, a, a Randy Moss, a Vince Carter, right? A Chris Chambers. You're not running into these guys every damn season. You're asking an awful lot. That's all I'm saying. Now, we talked a little bit about it before, um, about the fans, what would they do? Well, you get the prime opportunity, being a Packers fan. <laughs> Aaron Rodgers, that's another hot topic again. The saga continues. <laughs> uh, would you like Aaron Rodgers to stay? So, you know, a lot of people... I got a few questions, so answer it and then I'll get you another I one. got you. So, a lot, of, a lot of people are calling for his job, trade him, do this, do that. Here's the problem. A rebuild is coming, and it's in, it's in, uh, inevitable, okay? I'm saying we might as well just get one championship while we can. And that's – this is what I would do, okay? If, 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 the, if the powers that be called Mark Saxton and they were like, hey, man, what's the move? Give Rodgers what he wants. He obviously has a set – Roster in mind offensively. Give him what he wants. He said he would re- uh, re- restructure his contract this upcoming year for the $58 million. Give him that. Keep in mind, while getting these other players, to try and set them up for something in the future, not just a one- or two-year rental. That way, when Rodgers does leave, because if you give him what he wants, a championship is in the, the possible future. Well, when you have somebody like Aaron Rodgers, you're never out of it. Ever, no, ever. agreed, agreed. Like we, like this year, this was probably the worst offensive roster he's ever had. It being and in we, Green Bay, and look, you were one game away from being in the dance. Exactly, and, and you can never take that away. Even with the same exact roster, as soon as you get into the playoffs, you can run the table. All it takes is. Just a few lucky wins. That's all you have to get. You don't have to be better than every team you play. You no. just have to be hotter and just, and just luckier. Things, and certain sometimes. things go your way. That's all you need. And and he got that at the end of the year. He so, got every team he needed to lose, yep. lost. Yep. And luck was on their side, but they weren't loving it. No. What's the move with love? <laughs> it's either trade or start for love. What do you have for that? So here, here's here's my thing. So to add on to what I and just said. And do you said, believe him? I, I do, but I don't, right? So I do believe that he wants out if he doesn't play, but I don't believe his value is worth anything, so he doesn't get to demand these kinds of things. Right. Because I, th- I don't see anybody really giving – I think a, giving getting a third-round pick – would be huge. Would that, be, that would be extraordinary, and I don't think that – I would love to get a, a second or third-round pick for him. Right. That's not going to happen is what I'm saying. Um, I think if you have another team like the 49ers where they run through quarterbacks by acts, you know, injury. Agreed. I think then his value will be highest. But you know, my my point, my point being though is is you're also in the position right where everybody knows, hey, you need to get rid of this right, guy. Right. Leverage isn't on your side, right. right? So personally, what I would do is I would get at the most I would get I could for for love because I'm gonna be honest with the kid. Hey, man, you're not you're not gonna play. We're giving Aaron what he wants. This is our last shot at a Super Bowl with him here. I do not believe I can win one with you. All due respect. Right. Not yet. Right. You're just not that guy. Right. Once again, keeping everybody that we can, also adding who we can for the for the, you know the most bang for your buck. Trading uh, love and yes, this draft I am going after a quarterback. Not maybe not the first round. Right. Hopefully. 
but I am going after a quarterback to say, hey, man, you're 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 more than likely the next guy. When anybody, because this is another thing, anybody that thinks we're actually hating on Jordan Love's play, we've seen the same amount you have. Right there, we have nothing to build it on. And if if Jordan Love was that guy, I think halfway through the season when Aaron was struggling, we would have seen him. But you would take a struggling Aaron Rodgers over a full healthy Jordan Love all day long. And that's what the Packers did. And so that's where they need to just. Fully commit to Aaron Rodgers and say, you know what? What do you want? We messed up with this one. Right. We're dishing him out. We're going to get a third-round pick. Is that is it cool if we draft defense, or do you want another tight end or wide receiver? Right. And at this point, at this point, out of the offensive line, once again, we still have not added to what we lost this last offseason. You need that. Yep. That last, that last set of linemen that we had the year prior kept Rodgers safe, number one. Number two, disrupted defense is enough to say, hey, we're going to actually score in the red zone. Right. And we're taking a shot because this hurts both of us. We both talked about something that means a lot. <laughs> and hurts a lot. So. And and, and on top of on top here's of Here's to Aaron being traded, huh? I don't want it. <laughs> I don't want it. Um, what I would like to see on top of that, just a little tidbit. I didn't even talk to you about this. Well, actually, I think over one of our phone calls, I, I hinted over it. Josh Lombardi. Mm. Bring him over as our, our offensive coordinator. We want him back home. Want him back home. Um, I think him and LaFleur would be great together. They they think a lot alike. Um, and then get rid of our damn defensive coordinator. Yeah, you really regress this year um, defensively. I, it, was, it was tough to watch the Packers play defensively because – you have all these stars. Like, they are legit stars. Yeah. Even your rookie, I can't... The name is off my head right now. He got ejected, you know. Oh, Quay Walker. Quay Walker. He was seven tackles off of the leading tackler for the Packers in NFL history as a rookie. Yeah. Like, come on. Like, that's... the LaFleur, even though we disagreed with it at first, it turned out to be, hey, he's a tackle machine. That's what you want. You're a linebacker as a tackle machine. That's good. But... But the play calling was absolute... Right. Ass. They're running off a of star power, and no matter how good your star power is, if the if the calling, they're running the coordination, off of and no brains. Right. If you don't have somebody telling you what to do, the defensive coordinator, you literally, as the defensive coordinator, when you have all the star power, you cannot let it run off of just star power. No. You have to come up with a scheme. Like star power will get you so far, but we saw how far it'll get you once. The coordination is just not there. And once again, all bronze, no brains. Um, Pettin. The year before was brilliant. Um, he there was a reason why we were number two or number three in the league, and there was a reason why we didn't lose because somebody scored on us. No, we lost because we scored on ourselves. Right. Essentially, what I saw a lot of this year, and correct me if I'm wrong, the beginning of the year was was pretty much the same scheme. Yeah, and then he got to where everybody knows his scheme, and then he tried to over scheme himself. Instead of sticking true to what you do and, and tweaking it, but stay true to who you are. Now, I will say this. LaFleur actually, I, I mean, I know. So what he, he has taken the play sheet in his hand and started calling plays offensively. Defensively, for the most part, he gives his input. From my understanding, he gives his input. And the defensive coordinator really does what he wants anyways. I'm okay with that. LaFleur's an offensive mind anyway. Right. And if you and your offensive coordinator can work together, then fine. However, that defensive play call was just, and I'm going to keep harping on it because it was just dog shit. Your season on the line and you have a fucking soft, soft zone. zone. What, are, what are we doing? I don't understand. How has that man still got a job? And put Jair on Amon Ross St. Brown. Put Jair on every number one receiver until we have a reason not to believe he can't handle it. Yep. And on top of that, once again, it was proven, and now this could have been with whatever was going on with the Vikings that day, but J.J. got shut down. Yep. He got shut down. Now, obviously, yeah, part of it was the line and Cousins not have enough time, but even then, at the end of the day, you still have to be able to do your job. He right. still didn't want to throw it over there. Right. So I'm, I, I I say new defensive coordinator, keep Aaron, give him what he wants roster wise, 
con- construct that contract contract as much as it'll benefit us because Rodgers is done, folks. After this year, I do not see him coming back. Hmm. Um, and then just and and just hope that we can we can hit the hit the future with a stride. Yep. And last thing before we move it on to the NBA, uh, I just want to bring this up. Uh, I don't. I'm not picking the the Vikings to win the division next year. I think that division is. I'm not going to say a three way tie, but it's it could it's, go any. It, it is go. very close, and it also very depends. Close. A really, in all honesty, it depends on what happens during the off season. Right, because the Lions one, have a lot of cap. One for the Packers, right? Because mm-hmm. we don't know who what team is going to be on the field. Two, the Lions, like you said, they have ample opportunity to do whatever the hell they want. Yep. And on top of that, they're looking at a middle draft pick and that they could trade up and do whatever they want with. Yep. Trade up, trade down. Lions and are in a team, good spot right and now. And their team isn't far off from a complete product. Right. And uh, before the season started, I told Mark, I was like, I'm going to fuck around and pick the Lions to win the division. I was I was messing around. We were both hoping for them. And I was very close. I, I mean, and the, Lion, or the, the Vikings won 11 one-possession games. That's not. That's not, not gonna, what you need. No, it's not going to keep happening. But also, also, we also don't know. We don't know what which Kirk Cousins you're going to get all throughout the whole the whole year, or if you're going to keep Kirk Cousins. Right. I mean, there's that. There's, there's always a lot of that shit possibility. Going on. So moving it on. Actually, let's cover. Let's cover just early picks because okay. I don't think we're going to change. Okay. Early picks. We'll talk about it again Friday night, but we're gonna touch on it real quick. And tell the spread too. Um, Eagles uh, host the Niners with a two and a half point spread right now, um, and then the Chiefs host the Bengals. That one's supposed to be in Atlanta, correct? No, that's oh, in oh, Kansas because, City. Okay, and the actually, the, uh, earlier today the Bengals were favorites. And see, and now they're now they're saying it's even. It's even. Um, I just wanted to click in just to be safe. Yeah, early early picks. I'm gonna lock it. My lock of the week. I have two locks to be real with yeah. you. Uh, the 49ers are gonna win. I mean, I don't. I don't see the Eagles putting up a fight. Like I think the Cowboys have a better defense than the Eagles. And I, Jalen Hurts. I just he has to keep proving it. I understand this season was a whole lot, and I know everybody's gonna be like, "Oh, you're a Cowboys fan." You know, we, that's why you hate Jalen Hurts. No, I just... He's I got s- his jersey. I, yeah, yeah, come on. No, I just... I don't know. I don't believe in it yet. It's not. It doesn't seem like a Nick Foles. It seems more of like he's getting very opportunistic plays. And he's taking advantage of them, so good on him. Right. But I don't see him... He's not, like, eye-popping to me like Joe Burrow is. And maybe, you know, maybe that's me taking what we see when people talk about Patrick Mahomes. Right. But to me, I think Joe Burrow is the best quarterback. And that's left right now. That, well, I he's 3-0 and against Patty. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. I think that, he's the best quarterback and, and, in the NFL. I do. I put Joe Burrow above everybody right now. But well, it depends we're, we're, getting we're, a little, we're getting a little we're getting a little off. But my lock is 49ers winning. What do you got? Yeah, no, so that's just, just so I can play the game. That's going to be my long shot. Okay, okay. okay. <laughs> and then the Bengals are my lock. Okay, well, the Bengals are my lock as well. I got two locks. Bang, bang. <laughs> but, yeah, no, um, real quick, I just want to touch on it because make no mistake, folks. It's no, now I, we can touch on it. I was just waiting for the game. Yeah. So it makes sense. <laughs> um, I don't disagree with you that, that Joey B is, is the number one. Where I would like to kind of elaborate on is it depends on the category we're talking. Okay. Because Joey B is an all-around quarterback. Right. You're not going to get Patty numbers. Right. You know what I'm saying? But you'll get a Patty record, if not better. I'll, I'll tell you I'll tell you what I'm talking about, then. If there was a fantasy draft, he, you'd B. be the number one overall quarterback. Yeah, yeah I'm taking Joey B. That's, I'm the same way. Yeah. I think, now, that's no disrespect to Patrick Mahomes, and I'm, not even close. I think it, it's one and two or one, one and two. Like, it can, it can reverse for me. I just think Joe Burrow is able to do so much more, and I think as long as he stays healthy, he's going to have a better overall career. I really think that. Hot take, hot take. Let's hear it. Uh, Patty's definitely in my top five. 
But he's clo- he's closer to five than he is one. No, I, I it goes and, and number here's, one. And here's why: if we're t- if we're not talking about any specific stats or anything like that, okay. okay, just who you would pick? Who I would pick, and and this is why: under pressure, Patty has got to be one of the bottom tier quarterbacks I've ever seen. Now I think I get what you're saying, and we've gone over this on on phone calls countless times. But I think a lot of that it really is. It's that Bucks Super Bowl. Yeah. And that's really throwing you off like that. And but the Bucks that year were just unstoppable with their <laughs> with their pass they rush. They had an all star. But but we'll see it this this week. They had an all star roster. We'll see it this week because the uh, Bengals pressure was able to give Josh Allen that much all kinds of that out. much issue, uh, and that's why Josh Allen struggled. I mean, right. you give any great quarterback, that's what they preach. Right. Anybody who watches football or knows football even a little bit would know that. If you have a great pass rush, that can make a great quarterback be not good. Right. And I think I don't know, man. I just it's close for me, but I still got I got I got Joe one, Patty two. Yeah. What's your two then? My t- my two would be Josh Allen. Okay, my three is Josh. Okay. Okay. But see, once again, I'm not talking strict stats and numbers no, no, and no, things no, no, like no. that. Just Who so we get want. that out there. Because if we're gonna just if you want to just throw out numbers and things like that, Patty's got to be number one all day. No, Tom Brady. Well, no, I mean, I mean, I mean, I mean <laughs> just fucking with you. Easy there. <laughs> no, because everybody knows it's J.T. O'Sullivan who's the greatest quarterback ever. Sorry, you're wrong again. Vinny Testaverde. <laughs> I like it. Yeah, but uh, no, we we can move it along. I just want to touch on that. My number three. Mm-hmm. My number three. As much as as much as you're gonna hate this, that's where I would put Patty. Okay, all right. But, and then my number four, just for shits and giggles, would be, would be. I mean, if we're just talking this season, would be Jalen. Okay, no, yeah, yeah, I could see that for this season. I, I thought, like, we're doing, like, a we're doing a draft. Like, this is who you get for the next 10, 15 years. Oh, no. Well, then, well, if that's the case, yeah, Patty's three. Uh, uh, oh, you almost slipped up. Um, Did you almost slip up? What's his name? Yeah, Herbie, Herbie, number four. Okay. Herbie number four, if I'm, you know what I mean, for the long run. And then number five. Um, <sighs> Remember, this is this is multiple years. Yeah. <laughs> Go ahead and say it. I know you want to. Lamar. Oh, no. Come on. Come you want on. me to say Fields? No, I know what you're going to say. Who? You're really going to pick Lamar over Dak? Oh, my goodness. I forgot about Dak. Wow. I forgot about – because we, we we started talking about playoff teams and then I started shooting – We are a playoff team. You know what I meant. You know what I meant. I didn't mean any disrespect. Wow. Lamar? He didn't play in the playoffs. <laughs> no, you're right. You're right. I would choose Dak over Lamar. Um, For whatever reason, because we talked about him earlier, I was like, I already covered that. So – the, just throw that out there. That was a that was a typo, if you will, okay. on my on my side. No, I would take I would take Dak at number five. Yeah, my my one again is Joe Burrow. Two is Patty. Three, three Josh Allen. Four Herbert. Just because, like, look, we bag on Herbert. We got a lot of future ahead. But of you him. got so much potential. And then my five is Dak. I really yeah. like. If you're going to sit here and tell me, both of us. That there are, because I saw this today on TikTok, yeah. that there are 15 quarterbacks ahead of Dak. It's just not. I think I think you might be, you're trying to be Aaron Rodgers with the drugs, yeah. but you're taking the wrong one. And see, here's the thing. If this was if this was 10 years ago, if this was 10 years right, ago. Right, then you put Aaron. Well, well, then you I mean, put Tom. Well, well, right, right, right. You put those guys, but right. what I'm saying is then I would understand maybe at that point, top 15 Dak. Right, maybe, right, right, right. right? Well, he's only been in the league how long? <laughs> Seven, seven right, right. So we'll say seven years ago. But my point is, my point is, is, is Dak still has a lot of promising future. Should he get the right help? Right. But I don't give a fuck who you are. You could be look look at Tom Brady this year without any help. Right. And and people are gonna hate us because they're gonna be all oh, CD Tony Pollard. Yes, there's, they were there's, there. There's more. There's more to a football team than than the people that you can name off of that your kids and if love. That, and if that wasn't true, then why did Tom Brady, the greatest quarterback ever to play the game, mm-hmm. lose his ass to the Cowboys? Yep. He had the receivers. He had Lenny. Mm-hmm. What Playoff I'm, Lenny, yeah, nonetheless. Yeah. No, it blows my. So, okay, somebody put Jared Goff. Jared Goff got hot at the right time. Yes, he did. So I understand that. We're talking a legacy, not this year. Somebody put Kyler Murray. Careful, don't drink right now. 
I don't want you to spit it all choked. over. I almost choked. Good like lord. Like Somebody Kyler. put Kyler over Dak? Kyler's maybe my top 25. I No, I definitely got him in my, I think, 15 just because he's young. I'm not going to be that nice. But I do like Goff. Goff is in my favorite. Yeah, no, I like Goff. Goff is above uh, Kirk Cousins for me. People are saying, you know, this is people saying, not me. Right. Dak is black Kirk Cousins. Disagree. 100%. If you're saying Disagree. that, you know you know who loves saying that? Old white people. Mm-hmm. Because it gives them, they get to say it now. You know right, what I mean? Right, right, right. Pisses me off. Now, to the NBA. Move it along. Some else old people hate. <laughs> <laughs> I'll start us off with the Western Conference. Yeah, we're just going to cover standings. We'll, we'll dive deeper into the NBA as it gets along, folks. But as of right now, we're just going to dive into the standings. Go ahead and start us off. So Denver sitting there number one, 34 and 14. Joker could win MVP again, dog. Oof. Let's go. You got Memphis second, 31 and 16. Sacramento in third. Dude, that's huge for Sacramento. No, I did not hey, see this. Hey, they climbed out of out of the absolute abyss. The pits. <laughs> and and they said, hey, look, we're still a fucking ball team. And then you got New Orleans at 4, 26 and 22. You got Clippers, 28, 24. Dallas, 25, 24. I thought Dallas was going to be a whole lot better. But wait till you see this fall from grace. The Suns mm. in the seventh spot, mm. 25 and 24. Damn. Now, a few more wins, and they can be right back up to the top four, top three conversation. But, Phoenix, what are you doing? And then you got Utah, 25-25. You got Minnesota sitting at the 9th seed. Golden State barely swimming with the 10 spot. Which, now, here's the thing. I didn't I didn't really expect Golden State to be hot shit. But I was expecting them way to be way more now. in the mix than yeah, what they are. Yeah, same. And then you got Oklahoma, which is huge to a lot of people because they had a lot of injuries early. Uh, just outside of that top ten, then Portland, L.A., Sacramento, or San Antonio. Uh, San Antonio sorry, I, I'm used to saying Sacramento. <laughs> very low. Excuse <laughs> me. Sorry. Right. And then my guys going for the seven footer, Houston, <laughs> sitting at the number one spot in Send the world. Piss on it all. We got this. Now take me to somebody you're going to be happy with in the Eastern. I, I will say this. Um, I am shocked, mind you. I am shocked. Boston leading the charge, thirty-five and fourteen. Good on you, big mm. fellas. Uh, Philly, thirty-one and sixteen. I knew they would be definitely hot in the mix. I did not pin them as a number two. No, neither did I. Uh, Milwaukee hanging right around in there, uh, thirty and seventeen. Brooklyn, twenty-nine and eighteen. Uh, the Cavs just just hanging on. Yep, twenty-nine and twenty. The Heat, 27 and 22. Now, I want you to say this one slow because I fucking told you they would turn it around. <laughs> say it. The Knicks, 26 and 23. You know, if they were in the if they were in the West, they'd be like the number four spot. Right, right. No, yeah, no. Definitely, definitely turn it on. Um, Atlanta, the Hawks, hey, 24 and 24. That's 500 ball. Mm. They still got a chance. The Pacers, this is a team I expected more in the mix. I didn't. I didn't. I thought Chicago would be better than the Pacers for sure. See, and I definitely thought the Pacers would be better. Um, but yeah, they're 24-26, Chi-Town 22-25. and 25. I'm just so disappointed with Jimmy Butler. Yeah. Like, not, I'm not disappointed with him or in like towards him, but I just thought this team, the way they rallied with Jimmy before, I thought they would do the same thing. Right, it's not going down. Washington 21-26, Toronto 21-27. Um, Orlando, Charlotte, and Detroit. I think we all predicted those to be yeah, the bottom feeders. Yeah. I just the, the biggest shock to me is Sacramento by far. Oh no, hands down. Like hands good down. on Sacramento. They're like I said, there was a, there was a couple man. of teams here and there in the East. I expected okay, they could have done a little bit better, a little bit worse. The West went like this for me. Yep. Whoop. Agreed. Agreed. But um, I think uh, if I if memory serves us right, you and I both called Denver. To win out the yeah, yep. I I've been saying this. I've said this for the last two years. If uh, the Suns didn't win it two years ago, they're not going to win it ever again. Yep, and it's just it's well, not just, not in this era. Let's uh, let's move it along. How huh, to hockey? Once again, we're going to cover standings. The All Star Game right around the corner. Yep. Well, All Star events. Events. 
games. Yes. If you will. Plural. Cool jerseys, though. I like them. Do you <laughs> like them? I do. Okay. They're just inverted. Right. You know? That's all they are. I'm like, okay, that's cool. I like the old style ones way better. Like the ones in the early 2000s. Those ones were sick. Yeah, but. Those ones were my favorites. But we're never going to get anything cool like that ever again. No, we aren't. Not in sports. We're, we keep like, we like to be progressive in sports. We like to see cool jerseys and be like, you know what? Fuck the Oilers uniforms. Fuck the, the cream sickle <laughs> right. Tampa Bay unis. Right. You know, fuck the old Chargers unis. We don't need those anymore. <laughs> Thank God the Packers ditched their old jerseys. Hey, hey, that was that was some classic football right there, son. Some classic <laughs> trash ass jerseys. <laughs> why don't uh why don't you lead us off with the Eastern Conference? I'll take the Western. All right. So again, you got Boston and one. <coughs> How? Fuck I just I, I hate, hate I hate Boston. How? I hate them. They've been playing great. They've been playing great. They got uh, 80 points. Jesus. They they are... Uh, can you beat Boston? With a bat? Or... And we get Zidano. Uh, or, or Zidano. Zidano? Zidano. Zidano, okay. Um, but here's the thing. Chara. Chara is not there anymore. No, I know, but you get them. Yeah. No, you get the bat and Chara. Oh, to That's take them on. Oh, yeah, no, yeah. I'll, I'll follow Chara to the gates of hell. Okay, okay, cool. Yeah. Yeah, me too. <laughs> and then you got Toronto as second, which usually 68 points means you're doing something good. But not when you got Boston ahead of you. But the good thing for Toronto is they don't have to play Boston first round. Right. So Toronto has a chance. Then you got Carolina at three with 66. The Devils at 66. They're really... The Devils are turning it down a little bit. Now, yeah. I've been watching the Devils play a lot because I'm so curious on how many, how so many rookies and new players together can they're, play this they're, well. They're, yeah, they're doing great. You want to know why? One play, the Devils scored. I saw two penalties on the Devils. Cash in the in the ref, dog. Ooh, that's what I'm saying. I'm calling Ooh. it now. Calling it now. Then you got Tampa Bay. A little bit. They're cr- they're crawling back for right. sure from the beginning of the season. Sixty one points. You got the Rangers sixty. That's a big disappointment. Yeah, the Rangers. Uh, Pittsburgh too. Yes. Only fifty six. Uh, Washington fifty six. So the OV. Crosby, I mean, they're the same. Yeah, but Ovi can only do so much by himself. <laughs> so this is actually, this is interesting. Uh, for anybody that watches hockey, everybody likes to say Ovi's way better than Crosby. Ovi's a great slot player. Crosby's a, a great overall player. He's And he he's a big play guy. Um, more often, where Ovi is the guy, I'm going to put the team on my shoulders and go. In the, in the, in the crease of the slot. Right. That's so, it. That's it. so, come on, Ovi, like. I'd take Crosby over Ovi. Oh, I don't want really either of them. I don't like either. Well, I know you don't like either. But, <laughs> but yeah, no, I'm taking Sid. Okay, I'm taking cool, the kid. Cool. I'm, 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 glad, the kid. I'm glad we have some brain cells around here. I'm taking the kid. Then you got Buffalo, Florida, New York, and then our boys Detroit, number one overall with 48 points. <laughs> Look at us. And Philly below us. Fuck Philly, dude. <laughs> yeah, fuck Philly. And then the rest of the league, who the fuck cares? Because they're below the wings. Mm. Take me to the best in the West. Hey, Dallas. Who I want to point out has 20 less points than the number one team in the East. I just want to say the 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 wings, the wings have a shot at climbing up to make that eighth spot if they were still in the West. Well, you know what? This is looking a lot like basketball, huh? <laughs> so uh Dallas. 64 points. The Jets, hey, that's something. I knew they were capable. I did not see that um, no. um, unfolding this year for them. 63 points, right? The Golden Knights, I always expect them in the mix. 61 points. The Kings, huh? Huh? 60 points. Where Climbing did they come from? From the depths of hell. Uh, after they got, after they were so good. Remember them and the Rangers? Yes. And then they both went like this. But now... The Rangers went like this. But the Kings went like this. Hey, because they had to defeat a Kraken down there. Huh? Because they're next in line with the 59 best points. Unis in hands sports. Hands down, hands down. Um, Edmonton, 57 points. Just trade, just trade McJesus already. Yeah, Colorado, 55 points. And Calgary, 55 points. Now I understand it's a two point difference. But uh, that, battle, that Battle of Alberta is getting hot. It's, it, it's gonna be cool because now fights are starting to heat up. They're starting to let people fight now. Yes, they now are. that we're getting closer to the All Star break, there's more there's more tension building up, right? Yep. And what happens? It gets closer. It gets closer, and then it bursts, yes. and then you let them fucking fight. So let's go. I've been seeing too many fights being broken up. Let them fucking fight. 
Minnesota, 54. Nashville, 52. St. Louis, 49. Vancouver, 41. San Jose, 38. The Yotes at 35. Anaheim at 33. And That's for you, Minnick. goodness gracious, Blackhawks. Um, I, I remember, what was it, only... Well, Easy, I was like in high school. Easy. Eight, nine years ago now? Easy, I was in high school when it happened. It's a dynasty. What happened with 32 points? You know what happened? What's the last part of dynasty? Nasty. <laughs> that's what happened. And that's what they'd be experiencing right now. Well, folks, stay tuned for a Friday night show. Please like, follow, possibly. subscribe. No, it'll be there, regardless. Well, do we want to break it? Not yet. Mm-hmm. Not yet. We'll shoot it out there. Stay tuned. Um, no, st- uh, please like, follow, subscribe, comment. Do all the goods for us. Thank you for talking some shit. Thank you for hanging out. It's been a good episode. Y'all have a good week.